we all became so close from that show that I felt like I'm going to be friends with these women forever. And, um, you know, going into traders, it was just like, it solidified that bond even more. Okay. So Rachel, I guess my first question is, um, how were you cast on the show? Like, what did you know about the show? I know you're really into reality TV, obviously, but competitions, yeah. especially. So talk to me about just casting for the show. Yeah. So I, I got the phone call because as one of the reality stars, I didn't really go through a casting process. It was more like they asked me if I would be interested. They kind of told me about the show and I was like, this show sounds like something I have to be on. Like they pitched it as a murder mystery in a Scottish castle. So I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to like be part of this show. It's right up my alley. I love competition shows. Um, and I knew that that was, I knew right then that I had to do it. And so I was like, whatever you guys need, I will do it. <laughs> and was this the same casting as Snakes in the Grass or different? So, no, uh, I was reached out directly by NBC, but it is Snakes in the Grass is NBC Universal. Right. Okay. So they so, might have just been like, let's get our snake, our favorite Snake in the Grass team. <laughs> literally. So Sari told me there was kind of an unspoken thing. You guys filmed that first. Would you agree with that? Would you say you came in and you were like, okay, like I kind of, can work with Stephanie and Sari because I just saw them? A hundred percent. I thought right away that we would be totally great because we had this like snake in the grass bond. And I felt more comfortable with them than I did with Cody because you think like going in to a show, if you know someone, you're going to want to work with them and you assume that there's going to be this like unspoken alliance. But like I knew right away that Stephanie, Sari and I with snake in the grass and we were just so close from that show but then like i was never really comfortable with cody and i think one of the earliest gives for me that cody was acting different around me and i think that that was one of the biggest things where i was just like okay he's a traitor like that was just it was you can read people's like vibes you know mm -hmm. yeah you mentioned that he was a traitor in the first episode and i was like i mean i don't know if, you know editing or whatever but i was like I, I, you, you seem to suss him out pretty early. Yeah. I felt like, so they did, they showed, yeah, on one of the first episodes, I felt like as soon as I walked into the castle and Cody was like, oh, hey, Rach, and like all cool and calm. And then he, we got picked for traitors and he started like acting differently. Like Cody is this guy, he's like charismatic, he's super charming. You talk to Cody for five minutes and you are like, oh, I love this guy, let's go have some beers, you know? Yeah. Like he's in real life, like he's just a guy that you wanna be friends with. But then in the beginning of the show, he was like so excited I was there. And then after Trader stuff happened, he started acting so differently, especially I felt like he acted differently toward me. Mm. And that to me was just like, I don't think he, I was like, he either just like doesn't like me or he's just like, has to be a traitor. Cause this is not how he normally acts, but there's 20 people. You have to convince everyone. And, um, I, at the beginning, when I started saying my suspicions about Cody, nobody wanted to listen to it. And then they were just like, Oh, because she's from big brother. She's trying to get the other big brother person out. And so you, you have to like really start trying to find like, like shows, right? Like you have to be like, He's doing this. He's mm -hmm. doing that. So throughout the whole thing, uh, I was I was definitely like, okay, I've got to figure out how to, to prove that it's Cody. You know, it's not just like you can't just have a vibe and then people go off the vibe, right? Right. Plus you had Stephanie who was going after him for you. So. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank God. Thank God Stephanie was like onto him too. And Kyle, when once Kyle was onto him, I think that's yeah. when we really were able to like, get him, you know, like, you know, figure it out, get everyone else on board. And it's just, you know, people just didn't want to just listen to just me, I think. Yeah. I, I listened to Cody's podcast. He had said something like, um, that you wanted to work with him and he was just like, I'm sure. Do you yeah, think Oh, a hundred percent. I went, I pulled him in a room and I said, Cody, listen, we've hung out. I know your family. I want to like, let's work together. I don't care if you're a traitor. Like I literally said, I didn't care if he was a traitor. And like, he was just like, oh yeah, cool, rage, cool, whatever. And I'm just like, dude, <laughs> obviously, like it's just, there's something there. Like something is just different and it's just easy to kind of show. You know what I mean? Like you can just tell. Yes. Who else did you, um, did you know anyone else prior to the game other than those three? 
I, I mean, obviously I had like known Reza. I was a huge fan of his, um, but I had, I think I had met him one time, but like just casually. And then I had interviewed Brandy before, but I didn't really, I don't think she remembered that we had interviewed because I said, hey, I interviewed you on my show one time. And she was like, oh, okay. So, um, yeah. you know, that wasn't gonna be a, a way in. Uh, I knew of Ryan Lochte, I knew of Kate. Um, but I didn't like, I didn't know them and none of the new players. Um, I didn't know any of the new players. So I went into the show totally wanting to be a trader. I thought I would be a great trader. I pitched the production on putting me as a trader. I was like, I definitely want to be a trader. Um, but you know, alas, I was not a trader. <laughs> I know it would have been fun. It would have been, yeah, fun. I think it would have been fun. And I really liked how. The traders, I mean, I would have never played a game like three. I probably would have played like Christian or Cody. Like my game would have been messy. It probably would have been obvious. So it could have been really exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We didn't see you many, much the first episode or two. Was yours, did you go in with a strategy of like, let me like observe a little bit more than I talk at first? Did, like talk, talk to yeah. me about that. Yeah, so my strategy going in uh, was I wanted to be obviously want to be a trader, but if I wasn't going to be a trader and I was a faithful, I thought I would go in and be more of a social gamer. And I would tr I was going to really try to play a game that was more, uh, you know, observing things and getting to know people. And I really wanted a good social game. I've really not had great social games in the past on my shows. Um, so I want but I wanted to give people a reason to keep me around. And I thought being good at competitions in this show really helps. And then if you have a good social game, you know, if you form these real, like, uh, you know, sincere relationships, I think it's really important for this kind of game. No, I think you're right. And I actually do think you did a good job. I mean, you lasted pretty long considering. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And I think part of it too, once, um, once I was able to, you know, make myself a little bit of like a target too, it helped because yeah. I think I definitely avoided the murders. <laughs> yep. But I was always nervous that someone was going to bring me up in banishment. So I wanted to make sure I had really strong friendships. Yep. Um, and I know the friendship was so important to a lot of the other players. What did you ever suspect, Suri? I, we did at the very end, especially my biggest tell for Sari was when she voted me out. I yeah. was like, uh, I wish I could have, I wish after that I could have just been like, it's definitely Sari. But then also when I was leaving, I didn't want to blow up her game because I was gone. Yeah. And as close as I was to Stephanie, I didn't think she had a chance. And so on the way out, instead of like just pointing fingers, I was like, I don't want to blow up Sari's game. I should have blown up Christian's game, but I didn't want to blow up Suri's game. Because at that point, I think I knew Christian was a traitor too, but Stephanie already knew, so. Christian blew up his own game a little bit. Yeah, Christian blew up his own game, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, what was your, like, what, at what point, I guess, all right, so did you guys fly home or did you stay there? And at what point did you learn that Suri won and were, what was your reaction? Oh my God, I was so excited for Suri. I knew, I knew she was going to win. She was flawless, I mean, Flawless. She played that game like masterfully. People will literally be talking about Suri playing this game for years to come. They'll be on season 10 and talking about, I want to play a Suri game. Like it was the perfect, you know, and I don't know if there's ever going to be another Suri game, but it was the perfect, perfect, flawless game. Um, she was just, I mean, it when she won, I was like, I wasn't surprised because I felt like this makes sense. But then I, when I found out that Ari was a traitor, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes sense why he turned on me. And I, you can't hate him. It's like they're given a job, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Wait, had, remind me, do you, were you aware of Suri before Snakes in the Grass? Like, had you known her survivor? Of I course, guess? yeah. I saw yeah. I knew Suri before Snake in the Grass, but I didn't, I wasn't like, I don't think we've ever met. Maybe like a, we go to these events, you know, maybe I like met her in passing, but I wasn't friends with her. But Snake in the Grass, I mean, honestly, Snake in the Grass was such a fun, amazing experience. We all became so close from that show that I felt like I'm going to be friends with these women forever. And, um, you know, going into Traders, it was just like it solidified that bond even more. Yeah, I think I, I I heard Stephanie or you talk about it on your live. You guys couldn't talk about Snakes in the Grass, so it's like yeah. 
You had yeah, to talk they around us, it? <laughs> no, they told us not to talk about it. We were like, uh, we know each other from reality stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we never talked about it. And it was, you know, I think we had an unspoken bond, but it didn't really come into play except for that we just could like trust each other. Yeah. I trusted Stephanie unconditionally and I knew she was not going to screw me over. And I trusted Sari unconditionally and I thought she was a faithful and I thought, you know, she was, she had my back. And you know what else is crazy? You thought if this story was a traitor, I just don't care because she's so good. <laughs> and she, and since you guys were on the same page, it's not like she wanted to murder you. Exactly. Or she kind right. of had to banish you because. Yeah. You almost want to work with the traitors in this show. If you can figure them out and you can keep it in your back pocket, you want to work with them in the beginning. And, um, but, and you, you're like a big personality and, and traders right. like to keep them around, right? Yes, exactly. You have to kind of put a target on yourself. It's a really hard game. It's a really tough way to figure it out because you have to put a little bit of a target of yourself. Not enough to get banished, but just a little. Yeah. Um, you need to kind of uh, be able to play with the traders to where they trust you and they want to keep you for some reason. And then you need to be able to have your, you know, bonds with the faithfuls that you can definitely tell this person's a hundred percent faithful. Like, you know, if you're playing as a faithful, you have to have at least one or two people that you can definitely tell are faithful because you need to have them on your side to vote, to go into votes and banishments and everything. Yeah. It, I think it'll be interesting this, it, if they do a second season, how that plays out. Cause I wanted to ask you about almost like the meta game. Like you've been on many reality shows. A lot of these newbies obviously have not. Were you thinking about, okay, they're probably making this many celebrities, this many women, this many men traders? Were you thinking about, oh, at breakfast, like what order people are coming in? Were you thinking about those kinds of things, like production wise? Yeah, I mean, I definitely had the idea in the back of my head. Um, when it comes to traders, I always kind of thought, it, the rules say three to five. So I always just thought like three to five. And like, yeah. I always thought like, okay, this is definitely one of those things where they're, it's not going to be obvious and it could be anyone. And so you kind of don't, you don't put the two and two together. You know what I mean? You're not, I wasn't thinking like it could be this many men, this many reality yeah. people, this many. I was just thinking they're going to probably like whoever picks the traders, however they were picked, it's probably going to be something that is totally something we're not thinking. You know what I mean? Cause I would think like, how can production make this as you know, keep the traders in as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, that's what I kept thinking. And no, breakfast stuff, I should have picked up on it. I've Yeah, I've played so many guys, I should have picked up on that. Well, I now I feel like for season two, they have to change that because it's very obvious. Like, yeah. okay, I don't know that? if that was the editing either because oh. I don't remember if it was that obvious when we were, I don't remember who came in, like what order they came in. I feel like they wouldn't have made it so obvious, but like, of course, and when you go back and edit something, you have to make it, you yeah, know, because suspenseful. you want the audience. Yes, right. It has to be suspenseful. But I feel like, I feel like they might have made it to where there was traders coming in last, and we just so we didn't pick up on anything. You know yeah, what I mean? They might have done that once or twice. I'm trying yeah. to remember. Honestly, it's like all a blur. <laughs> I know, right? And it's you watch it so quick because it's yeah. like you're binge watching. So I remember. I watch it and I go back and people ask me questions about ep the episodes and I'm like, wait, did that happen? <laughs> I was watching it at five in the morning. I'm like, I don't, it's, it's yeah. a blur. Um, Same. But obviously people, you know, I had a lot of questions for you on Twitter. Uh, people wanted to talk about Kate. You know, yeah. you've had your fa fair share of reality TV arguments with people, but like, let's talk about Kate. Like, did you know her prior? Where did you guys get off on the wrong foot? That is a great question. I have no idea um, where we got off on the wrong foot. Uh, I'm guessing I just have that personality that can be a little bit like some people are like, okay. But I think there was a moment when Brandy was still there. And I think Brandy and Kate and I were talking. And I think they were talking about Michael. And I was like, I don't think we should just talk about Michael. I think we should fit think about some other people. Like, I don't think it's Michael. And I think that might have rubbed them the wrong way where I was just like, I'm not going to do it. Shut it down. And I think I left the room. And then I was thinking, you know what? Uh, they probably are like, okay, she's not on our side. And then I think from there, and then Brandy leaves, I think that it was just one of those things where Kate was just like, you know, 
uh, Rachel's not going to work with me. She's probably a traitor, maybe. So that's I don't so know. If interesting, because I thought yeah. you guys would get along, but maybe I mean you were probably in the more Big Brother strategic mindset right. than maybe them. So maybe that was the disconnect. Um, I think so, and I think a lot of times I saw Kate, and I was like, okay, the note, and then she's you know the Brandy of it all, where her and Brandy are calling everyone out, <laughs> and Brandy was a faithful, and I was like, well then Kate must be pulling Brandy's puppet strings, and like she's probably a traitor telling Brandy, like, this is, you know, it's definitely Michael. Let's go after Michael. And I just kept thinking in my head, like, all the things Kate was doing, how that would be something a traitor could totally do to throw us off. And sure. wouldn't it be a genius, right? Wouldn't it that just be the best idea ever? Like, throwing money out, like, trying to piss everyone off. Like, then you're just like, she's obviously not a traitor, you know? So I thought, I was thinking the opposite. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, it could have yeah. went both ways. Like for us, it's obvious she yeah. wasn't. But like when you're there, I mean, crazy things are happening. It also seemed, I don't know if it seemed like it for you, but on the show, it seems like people were almost calling the traders like, like they were horrible people. Like they had, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what... bad. We've got to get them out. <laughs> yeah. I think that Kate started that. Okay. <laughs> Because she would just she would just be like, oh, um, you know, she would be like, they're greedy and manipulative. And I was like, it's a game, Kate. Like that has nothing to do with greedy or manipulative. I know you got you you have fun on social media. Like, have you you and Kate talked? Are you good? Or are you just kind of like whatever at this point? Um, no, I mean, we talked in New York and we were just like, okay. oh, it's a game, you know, whatever. It's totally no big deal. Like it was funny. I mean, I, you know, she's funny. Like I will have to say like it, she got me good. My favorite was the honeymoon. I was like, I don't remember her saying, I, I don't remember thinking I heard it. So I think if I would have heard it, I would have been like, I could have had a better comeback, but I don't remember hearing that, but that was a good one. That was like, <laughs> she's like so point on and so quick. I'm she's like, very quick so witted. Yeah. I know. <laughs> she's so quick. That honeymoon one was so good. I was like, damn, I set myself up. <laughs> I know she also, you know, threw some shade at your fashion, but people on Twitter are like really, they said your outfits were iconic and some of them were really good. So, like, Thanks. I also want to know because, like, I saw a lot of people wearing like plaid. Did they give you guys some stuff or did you bring, like, tell me about your wardrobe? Yeah, we okay. definitely had we so we did have a wardrobe person that was there on set and she had options for people that didn't bring things and then before we went on they were like can you send us photos because the wardrobe the same wardrobe person on set was um also uh pre-production with us so she was like what are you gonna wear but we picked out our own outfits so like i had sent all these photos and i was like okay it's clue it's uh you know we're in a castle yeah. i mean to be like i was thinking in my head it was going to be iconic <laughs> hey, you embraced it i loved it, it was yeah, i totally embraced it and i was like every morning i'm going to do my hair in these like little <laughs> spiral curls and i was i dyed my hair more red for the show mm -hmm. and i i tried i was thinking of all the different things i could do to really just like play it up and have fun with it you know you don't know when you're going to film another fun show like this so i i really wanted to have a good time with it no, see, I respect that. I would have probably been like, I just want to wear a hoodie. So I like yeah. respect you went all in. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. I was just like, you know what? If we're going to be in a castle in Scotland, I'm going to be dressed like Clue. <laughs> yeah. People want to know, what was the hardest um, banishment for you and why? Yeah, the, I think Michael's banishment was the hardest for me because I had formed a relationship with Michael. And even though he was like really over the top with like his accusations and like he was over gaming, I still felt like he's definitely not a traitor because he is over gaming so much. And I think it's just this is a huge deal for him because he is such a fan of the show and he's such a fan of like reality TV in general. And then he sees three and he sees me and he sees Stephanie and, you know, Ari and all Brandy, all those people too, but like really, really big fans of Survivor Big Brother shows. I just thought he was just trying to be a, like what we were like, you know, I thought he was trying to play as hard as he thought he could. So I really mm -hmm. felt for him. And then he, you know, he said he had social anxiety. He was able to share his past with us. And I just felt like, you know what? I, I don't feel that this guy is a traitor and I don't want him to feel like we're trying to single him out. That was another reason why um, 
I think a lot of people, maybe that did create the Rachel Kate divide because Kate was so confident yeah. the traitor. And I was like, I was like, I just don't think, I don't see it. And I, I feel like I don't want him to feel like we're singling him out, but you know, you're playing traitors. It's like anything you can, people can pick up on anything being a traitor. Right. So, you know, and once, we, and once we were your wrong. name is out there, it's like really hard to get rid of it. I feel like a hundred percent. Yeah. Right? And we were wrong. Oh, it's so hard. We were so <laughs> wrong on so many occasions and yes. <laughs> so many times people were just like, I'm going to vote with what everyone else is saying. And I feel like we don't on big brother. We see that where people are just like vote with the house on this. It was not as bad. It wasn't mm -hmm. as much of a vote with the house. And we definitely had more discussion about it. But I think there were times like with the Michael vote, it was like vote with the house. And then with the with the Geraldine and with Shelby, it was definitely like a lot of that. But we did see where there was a lot of like different votes. And I like that. Yeah, I was I was surprised too, it, in, in, in a good way that it wasn't like always a landslide vote. Right, like 100%. You know, fun to watch. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there anything while you were watching the show that surprised you or anything like they cut out that you're like, oh, that was like a fun time or like you remember something, anything from the show when you were watching? Well, I mean, the, tr the train was genuinely really fun and they did show that. So they but they just didn't really go into as right. much on that. Um, the um, oh, my gosh, the second part of the ghost hunt was really fun and i felt like they they kind of like swept through that part um there were just there were so many silly fun competition moments that you know you can't show everything my favorite yeah. parts were always the competitions of um, course <laughs> yeah that's i know i love that stuff and then it was fun to game like there's a lot of times when we would go into rooms and talk a game and talk strategy um and they just couldn't really show that because of time i'm sure with the episodes um and there were a lot of times when we were just kind of goofing around, having a good time getting to know each other. So there's a lot that, of course, you can't show every single second. But, um, you know, I thought it, there was a really, really fun show. And everyone was really, the production team was amazing. Everyone was so kind and they were just so great to work with and they treated us so well. So, Rachel, uh, people want to know what's next. What's the next competition? Oh, yeah. Great question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> would you ever do Survivor the Challenge? Like, would you do any of those? You know, I would love to. I just, um, I don't know. I don't know if I see, I think my sister would be really great on the challenge. Yeah. Um, and I think it would be fun to watch her on the challenge. I would, I always want to do Survivor. I'm always saying, put me on Survivor. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just waiting for Jeff Probst to give me a call. Legends of Big Brother. I would love to do a shortened Big Brother season. Um, you know, I'm always game for put me on anything. You know, I'm I'm here. Yeah. But, but are you done with the three month Big Brother? Uh, unfortunately, I think so. It's just so hard with kids and you yeah. know, like life, work balance, and like it's just it's a lot. My poor husband. He's such a good sport. <laughs> I was going to ask, how did Brennan feel about you going on the show? Was he excited for you? Did he give you any advice? Yeah, he, for this show, he was really super excited. Um, but like, he was armchair coaching me the entire time. Yeah, yeah. He was like totally armchair coaching me the entire time. 